yourself, Wilford. You've been found guilty by this court of conspiracies with intent to have deposed and destroyed the King's person and the King's blood, and over that you have intended to have been King. All this under the falsely assumed title Edward Earl of Warwick. It is thereupon agreed by all the said judges that you have done treason and deserve death. It is therefore demanded by His King's Grace what is to be done herein, whether process of law pass upon you, or that nothing be done further upon the same treaty. Arthur. It is our wish that the execution take place as soon as possible. Your Majesty. And the Earl of Warwick, my lord? Build our colleges, mother. Found our professorships, but leave England to me. I lay the foundations for the minds of our people. You should be laying the foundations for their peace. You'll have none. There will be no peace in this country while there are Yorkist pretenders, and there will be pretenders as long as you keep Warwick alive. Kill him, and you kill rebellion. What would you have me charge him with? His birthright? Why not? My lord. Charges. Legality. He has done no wrong. The men you fought and who died for Richard at Bosworth, they'd done no wrong either. Then we were at war. You are still at war. <sighs> Plan a legal state. Make laws if you will and enforce them with the people. But you yourself cannot be committed to peacetime laws until you have removed every trace of Plantagenet stock from the face of the earth. You are now king. Make it safe and certain that Arthur will be king after you. He will be, madam, and peacefully. While Warwick lives... You should have mothered a Plantagenet. The Tudor dynasty will not be founded on murder. Then there will be no dynasty. Don't try and make me a Richard. I wouldn't wish that, my son. Richard made mistakes. And the greatest mistake cost him the crown. He allowed you to live. Water's getting cold. I don't like cold water. What are you doing? <coughs> nothing, my lord, nothing. Uh, just not as quick as I used to be. <laughs> I've thought up a new routine, Girdler. Oh? In winter until April, I shall be shaved before the bed is made. Yes, my lord. But that way the water won't have time to get cold. Ah, oh, very good idea, my lord. We'll start it at once. Tomorrow, yes, eh? the <laughs> water will be warm yeah. and the change will... will do us good. Yes. <laughs> ah, that's it. What news is there today, Gardner? Uh, what news? Uh, well, now, let me see. Uh... Oh, yes, yes. Daisy Darius Erasmus. Now, there's a name for a man to call himself, eh? <laughs> well, he's coming over from Holland. Had the invitation of William Blount, so they say. <laughs> Daisy Darius Erasmus. <laughs> now, that'll be news to some. The desired beloved. Ah! Uh, what? That's what he calls himself. Daisy Darius Desired Erasmus Beloved. Philosopher. Oh, shows a want of humility, if you ask me, my lord. <laughs> Mind you, careful, my lord, now careful. Mind you, I have no time for all these philosophizers and thinkers. I mean, here am I, a man of very little brain to speak of. Now I ask Open you, in the name of the king. what's the use of all this talking about what a wonderful place this world could be, eh? <laughs> I mean, even I know it could be. Uh, yeah. Who, who is it, Girdler? Um, I, I, I don't know, my lord. You do know? Well, it, it is some court wainer, son, my lord, uh, Ralph Wilfred. What did he do? Hang in, madam, my lord. Look at me, Girdler. Why won't you tell me? There are three kinds of things I tell you. The kind they let me, the kind that would lose me my charge, and the kind that hurts me to tell you. With what is he charged? 
treason, my lord. He's pretender. Pretending to be whom, Gardler? In whose name did he commit treason? Yours, my lord. Edward, Earl of Warwick. There is no earthly thing, nature, fortune, nor even learning, past, future, nor even in the present. Therefore, I am of more importance as fame, honor, and science. Gadla! They can do nothing without my help. Gadla, come here. I want to ask you something. You said you didn't believe in thinking, Gadla. Uh, no, my lord. Well, I have been thinking. If I were King Henry and was threatened by pretenders, and Ralph Wilford is not the first girdler, I don't think I'd execute the pretenders. I'd get rid of the cause. I've been in here since I was nine years old, girdler. I don't know him like I knew my uncle Richard. You hear more than I, girdler. Do you believe the king would think like that? I know the king to be a just king. He do you no harm, no matter how many pretenders, provided you give him no reason. That I must do no wrong. And you you must tell me nothing but what is permitted. Swear, Girdler, swear you'll do no wrong. We must give no cause. As God is in heaven, I swear. Now, shall I read more? No. Sleep, Gardler. Good night, my lord. I think that deserves something special, don't you, Arthur? Yes, Father, I do. What shall it be? Bread and water. What? Bread and water for one wrong note. Yes, bread and water. <laughs> Our son is a harsh little prince. So we have no more music. The minstrels will play. Uh, what about you, my lady? I'm hungry. Then we shall eat. Good. <laughs> Henry, will you please keep quiet and sit up? That's much better. Father. Benedictus benedicat in nomine Jesu Christe. Amen. 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 May the minstrels play, Father? Yes. When I'm Queen of Scotland, I shall have music all the time, won't I, Father? And Henry will dance for me. Shan't. Arthur will. Oh, Arthur will be too busy dancing for Catherine of Aragon. Spain and God willing, madam. Oh, I will be too busy ruling to dance for Spain or God. Well said, Arthur. Spain, England, and Scotland. Who will I marry, Mother? Where will England be? Where you placed it. In the centre, mingled with true, unquestionable royal blood. You said the independence of England as a price for royal blood. No, Mother, I simply wish to speed the respect of Europe and those who still say that the crown of England rests on bastardy, high-ranking though it may be. My Lord, eat. Our independence is not at stake. We shall swallow up Scotland and ally with Spain. So, Arthur will marry Catherine of Aragon. Yes. Spain and God willing. Gravissimum et santissimum. Ah, oh. Brother Eager. My lord. I'm afraid you're too late to dine. Eh? Oh, there's a rumour going about the court that the Spanish ambassador is so poor that he only visits the King of England when he wants a free meal. Ah, see, si, and I know, my lord, why I am so poor. Oh, why is that? Because there is a rumour in my country that the Spanish ambassador is really an English ambassador in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, so... You look pleased, Rodrigo. Uh, with reservations, my lord. King Ferdinand agrees to the wedding ceremony by proxy on the day you suggest, uh, 19th of May. I am to stand proxy for the Princess Catherine. Oh, I'm to see my son married to a Spanish Jew. Uh, perhaps. 
<laughs> there will certainly be no president. <laughs> Am I to supplement your income now, Rodrigo, or wait for the conditions? Uh, there is uh, one condition, my lord. What's that? King Ferdinand feels he could not commit the Princess Catherine to a wedding co contract with any country unless he were assured that the line of succession were as secure as the sovereign could make it. Uh, Spain asks merely for the removal of two persons. Uh, one, the pretender Perkin Warbeck, and two, uh, that rival to the, the throne of England whose claim is, is stronger than your own, Edward Earl of Warwick. Spain asks merely... Spain is adamant. The Earl of Oxford tells me that young Warbeck is seriously ill and has been asking to be removed to more uh, lenient confinement. You are very well informed, Rodrigo. In the interests of the union between our two countries, would it not be possible to uh, deny the request? Ambassador, you may inform King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella that when their flimsy claim to the Spanish throne is as strong as my son's is, then may they ask such things of me, but never. Never will they have the right to be adamant. But even if the marriage union was not in question, would it not be in the interests of yourself and the Tudors to uh, dispose of these two? The interests of the Tudors are justice and legality. Tell Spain that I am no tyrant. And for the sake of my people, I will not condemn either the pretender or the Earl of Warwick without a just cause. For the sake of your people or the sake of your conscience? I am the conscience of England as well as a conscience unto myself. Neither wishes to murder, and they cannot be separated. Could they not, my lord? If Warwick or the Pretender cannot be condemned without a just and judicial cause, they cannot be condemned at all. And they will not be. Warm in our girdler. Soon be spring. Uh, still need a fire then, my lord? Yes, not warm enough without that. Oh, well, that devil's clay around me. Fetching logs. Ah, I've never known anyone like that one. <laughs> Boat idle. We should have kept blowing. Much better if you ask me, Lou. Couldn't lift things anymore. Oh, we managed. It's a long time since I wore these. Oh, 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 oh must be you. Twelve years. Oh. Twelve years ago today. St. Paul's. Oh, yeah. Oh, time passes. <laughs> hey, you remember you tore it. Yes, yes, the sleeve, and and you patched it for me. Yeah, very badly. Wouldn't have noticed if you didn't know. Oh, thank you. Really wouldn't. They went to a lot of pains to prove me alive then. Oh, they did, my lord, they did. You're right, Girdler, the king can't want me to die. It's not even as if I'd done anything wrong. I know it's been a long time, but he, he wouldn't have shown me to all those people. Archbishop Morton, Morton and the Lords. All manner of people, yes. but an Archbishop. <laughs> Logs, my Lord. Thank you, Claymont. Logs, he's had time to cut a forest. Um, tell Master Digby you'll need some new clothes. And shoes, he can't wear those much longer. They'll probably have to wait. Yeah, well, he won't have to ask. Uh, is there nothing else, my Lord, darling? Uh, there is something else, Skyler. I want you to go to Master Digby and tell him that the Earl of Warwick wants to visit the Lion Tower. I simply want to see the lions from the walk. I went there once before, but I didn't see the lions. Well, say, Skyler, say just one day a week during spring. I want to get out of this room take my mind off things. Well, that's all. I have asked well, Ask again. No harm. No, my lord. No harm. What do you think, Clemund? I, my lord. Do you think the king will, will let me visit the lion walk? I think that depends, my lord. On what? On the mood the king's in. There's a rumor that Perkin Warbeck has asked to be moved to a new cell. Well? Well. If Perkin Warbeck's wish is granted, then I warrant yours will be too. For, my lord, if the king agrees to a wish of that nature, well, chances are he'll agree to anything. Oh, I hope so. I do hope so.
Don't you want the table? Uh, just there. In the chair just there. The room is ready, Master Astwood. Thomas Astwood, Master. A friend. Well, my lord, Master Digby has established Thomas Astwood as Warbeck's jailer. And Warwick? The usual jailers, my lord. Headed by Girdler and Robert Claymount. How long has Claymount been jailer, Master Digby? Twenty-five days, my lord. Then you will do nothing yet other than be lenient with the prisoners. When it is time for you to act, I will inform you by letter through the Earl of Oxford. I will leave everything in your hands. But in the meantime, we will let nature and Master Astwood run their course. No appetite, Master? No. Take it away. I ate it yourself. Thank you, my lord. They say the Earl of Warwick cannot tell the difference between goose and capon. Perhaps he could if he were better cooked. <laughs> Perhaps, my lord. Thomas Astwood. Condemned to be hanged, drawn and quartered during the Stanley trials. Was pardoned on the scaffold. I was just a boy, my lord. Since that time I have been loyal to the House of York. You call me my lord? There's no lord here, Thomas. Only you and I? Come now. The Duke of York is here, too. Oh, uh, Richard? I thought he was dead. Some say so. But not you. I'm eating his food. No, Thomas. You're eating Perkin Warbeck's food. Let those believe what they wish to believe. Thomas! Read this. A letter to me? Read it. What is this? Well, that depends on you. You can either do as the letter says and help me to escape, or deliver it directly to Mr. Digby and secure my execution. Who gave you these? The Mayor of Cork, John Walter, as a token for the day of your escape. John Walter. 
Well, my old friend has some strange ideas concerning clothes of a French working man. Take them back. Back? But they're not meant to be that kind of clothing. They're the clothes of a duke, my lord. Clothes fit to be seen at the head of a Yorkist army. Well, yes. I said I wish to escape, Thomas. And so you shall. It's all being arranged. At no such time did I say I was Richard, Duke of York. But you said... Those were your words. I am not your lord. I am Perkin Warbeck. Is that clear, Thomas? I made a confession. Get my friends to read it. It says I was born in Tournay and my father was a French commoner. And you can tell them when I leave this prison it will be as Perkin Warbeck or not at all. Then you'll have no friends. There'll be no money, except for Richard and the Yorkist cause. I am a French import, Thomas. Don't expect me to have a Yorkist cause. I'd risk my life again to be back in France, not to be another Yorkist martyr. Then you won't escape at all, and there'll be no help from anyone. Does anyone include you, Thomas? Yes. I'll fetch you a different change of clothes, Master Warbeck. It more befits your station. See that this is delivered to the Lieutenant of the Tower. I will receive the Spanish ambassador now. You wish to see me, my lord? You may inform King Ferdinand that the marriage by proxy will take place on the date agreed. And those Spain's condition, my lord? We give our word to Spain that by the time Catherine of Aragon arrives in this country, the matter of the Pretender and the Earl of Warwick will be settled to our satisfaction. My lord, it is true. The king has sworn to Spain that you will be dead before the year has ended. I've done no harm. Gardler, Gardler. You must tell Gardler tomorrow, and we will plan what is to be done. My mother, as humbly as I can, I recommend myself to you. The King of England is yet holding me, and those Englishmen who made me take it upon myself that I was Richard, Duke of York, have now left me, as I hold with the truth of the matter, that I am your son, Perkin Warbeck. There is no way from my prison, and no hope of deliverance, which makes my heart sad. I beg you to be so good as to send me a little money that I may give something to my guards to make them more agreeable towards me. Remember me kindly to our neighbors and relations. I pray each day that the king will look more kindly upon me, that I may again hope to see you some day.
swear that as God is in heaven, the king would never, never submit himself to such a crime. There's not enough here. We need much more. These will raise nothing. I... Is there no more? I... There is no more, Clayman. That's all? Don't let him do this, my lord. I have the word of a person in the highest authority. All right, then, name him. I'm not at liberty. No, because there is no name. It's gossip, hearsay, tell a rumour. This is no rumour. Oh, there have been rumours before. When the princes were murdered, when Clarence was murdered. I tell you, the king would never do this thing. My lord, may I take these? We've not enough to get outside, so we must find someone inside the tower who can raise the money for us. Wait for proof, my lord, wait for proof. Will the earl's body be proof enough for you, girdler? One more day, Clermont. One more day. It may be a m mistake. I just don't know. Very well, my lord. One more day. But whatever happens, if there is no one else, I shall go ahead with my plan to help you alone, with or without your permission. Clothes? What clothes, Gerda? Clothes for the Earl of Warwick, Master Digby. Oh. I mean, my lord has asked for them before. Uh, shoes especially. Especially, my lord has need of shoes. I'll send orders to the wardroom. Well? Well, uh, shall I wait, Master Digby? No, no, no. Don't wait, Gerda. I'll see to it. Thank you, Master Digby. Uh, well, I'll, I'll collect them later. Yes, do that, Girdler, do that. Oh, Girdler, there's something else I want to tell you while you're here. I'm moving you from the Warwick apartment. In future, you'll be charged with Patrick, the priest in the Wilford case, the Caesar Tower. It'll be in about another eight days. Good day, Girdler. Well? The guards are changing now. It's taken all the money we have, but Thomas Astrid is letting me see Master Warbeck. Warbeck? He's the only one who can help. Yorkist money. He's escaped before, and if anyone can help my lord to get out of here, he can. Ah, it's too dangerous. Dangerous or not, he can help. My lord, I shall tell Master Warbeck that if he will help, he must knock three times on the ceiling tonight. And you, my lord, you must knock back in reply. But once done, you've accepted his help, and you must leave everything to him. Good night, my lord. Good night. Well, what shall I do, Girdler? Girdler! You will do everything that Master Warbeck tells you to. When I'm not here, I hope you'll do what you think I tell you to do. And when I leave here? Oh. <laughs> well, as for that, I can't tell. But never fear, my lord. There'll be plenty of those who will. I'd never even wanted or even thought of wanting to be king. Then you must decide before Master Warbeck signals tonight. Once you've replied, the Yorkist money is brought in to help your escape. They will expect you to be their figurehead. Yes, but I don't... Look, everybody has a duty. Hmm? The king's duty is to safeguard the future of his family. Now is the time for you to fulfill your duty. In the name of the Plantagenets. Yes. There's no choice. Now, shall I help you undress? No, I, I shan't undress tonight. I should, my lord, try and get some The sleep. knocks? Oh, yes. But will you stay a while, Girdler? I can't, my lord. I shall leave tonight the same as every night and return every morning. We must risk nothing. Oh, Gardner, I'm frightened. Don't say that, my lord. Of course you're not frightened. You're Edwin, Earl of Warwick, nephew of Edward IV. Oh, there was a man, never afraid. Neither are you. Think of freedom. When you hear them, when they, you knock back, my lord.
wilt thou, Arthur, take Catherine here by proxy for thy lawful wife, according to the right of our holy mother, the church? I will. Wilt thou, Catherine, take Arthur here present for thy lawful husband, according to the right of our holy mother, the church? I will. I, Arthur. I, Arthur. Take thee, Catherine. Take thee, Catherine. For my lawful wife. For my lawful wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. You can have all the money you want, Thomas. Everything that's left over apart from my passage to France. Everything that's left over from what, Master Warbeck? Or from the money the Mayor of Cork is going to give us. So you've changed your mind? No, Thomas. But you can tell Walter that in return for my bribe money and the promise of my unconditional freedom, I shall escape with the last of the Plantagenets and deliver to him the true Edward VI. Edward VI of England. Edward, Edward VI. VI. Here's your money, Thomas. There'll be more if you need it. Just bring us our king. I can see freedom already, Thomas. All's well. They have the money. I expect Clement will be here soon. Uh, yeah, yes, my lord. Uh, I, I, I expect... Yes, uh, oh. <laughs> I expect... Clemon will let you know what's happening. <laughs> That's just what I was going to say, my lord. <laughs> well, I'll do anything I can. Anything I can, of course. Uh, <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be. Still young. Uh, oh, well... Oh. Mm. I kept this back. Remember, Archbishop Morton gave it to me. Oh, yes. Thank you for looking after me, good lad. Thank you, my lord. Mr. Warbeck knock, my lord. Good. That means they have the money. Yes. Yes. All's well. Uh, Thomas Astor wishes to see you, my lord, to uh, discuss these plans. Bring you clothes fit for your freedom. Bring you news from Master Warbeck. May I signal him? Yes, Kevin. suggests that we establish some form of communication between yourself and Master Warbeck. Uh, he, he suggests, my lord, that we bore a small hole through the floor of this apartment into the ceiling of Master Warbeck's. That'll be Thomas now. What was I saying? Yes, then you will be able to speak to Master Warbeck if anything happens, now that Girdler isn't here. My lord, Master Thomas Astwood. My lord. Oh. Can't you get through? Patience, my lord, patience. <laughs> well, how much longer? <laughs> Should be. Thank God. <clears throat> signal, Thomas, signal. Thomas, can you hear me?
hear me, Thomas? Yes, Master Claymound. I can. <laughs> they fit, Claymound. Perfectly, my lord. Yes. And now, my lord, a final touch. A pledge. My pledge of faith, my lord. The hilt is gold. I believe it to be Italian made. Thank you, Clemund. I shall look after it. You must hide it. Oh, yes, I, I'm just looking. Clemund? Yes, my lord? Do I look like a king? Yes. You do, my lord. Oh, Clemund! My pledge, please. Thank you. Good night, my lord. Master Warbeck? My lord, the plans have arrived from Cork. Thomas will convey them to yourself and Clemon tomorrow night, and you'll be free from this place within eight days. I need not say how much I thank you, Hakim. There's no need, my lord. It's because of you that I'm able to escape. Can you hear the lions, Perkin? Yes, my lord. Thomas tells me they can recognize execution nights, and their roaring can be heard all over London. I will let you into a tower secret, Perkin. The lions are starved for 48 hours before execution nights. Then the keeper of the lions gives them the smell of fresh blood, and so they roar louder. Well, sometimes that frightens me, my lord. I like them. I've drawn them. Thank you for your news, Perkin. Good night, my lord. Sleep well. Inside the tower, we've engaged Long Roger, Blowit, and Strangewish to make certain attacks at various points. At the signal for the evening guard change, Long Roger will seize Master Digby's office and gain control of the tower. Thomas will release yourself and Master Warbeck, and you will make your way, together with a number of loyal guards, to the Lion Walk. The gentleman outside who will help, my lord, will be waiting by the pollen gate. John Water and Master Finch will lead the Earl of Warwick and Master Warbeck across the East Smithfield and travel by way of Allgate to Master Proud's house. There, the Earl of Warwick is to be proclaimed Edward VI of England. What date, Claymond, have you appointed for the escape? The choice is our own, providing that Girdler visits Master Proud's house on the morning of the escape <laughs> to prepare him. Done well, Claymond. Don't you think, my lord? A perfectly planned watertight case of treason. <laughs> the proof. Tell the Earl of Oxford what proof you have arranged, Claymont. In the Earl's apartment, my lord, you will find a sword, an auger used for boring a hole between the adjoining apartments, the hole itself, and a suit of burgundy velvet fit for a person about to be proclaimed king. I have a velvet cloak with which I was bribed, and you will find on Girdler's person a gold crucifix, also used as a bribe by the Earl. Naturally, you'll swear an oath to all this. Yes, my lord. Naturally. Our final account with you. You'll be tried with the rest of the conspirators, but I guarantee you'll be given a free pardon, as agreed. My lord. Master Proud must be visited by Girdler tomorrow morning. We must let the plot ripen fully so that there can be no doubt of intentions. The list of arrests, my lord. And they must be made swiftly and in the following order. First Girdler and his associates, then Claymond and his, then Warbeck, and finally Warwick. I shall be with the king tomorrow, so I'll leave you to deal with those at Master Proud's house, but I shall return in time for the tower arrests. Digby, how did Clement 
persuade Girdler and Warwick to agree to the escape? He told them the truth, my lord, that the king was going to murder the earl. No, but my lord... No, Oxford, I will have none other than the Pretender and the Earl of Warwick brought to trial. I appoint you, Lord High Steward, that you may preside over the trial. If you find them guilty, you will condemn them both. But no one else is to be arrested other than those two. Do you understand? But there were those only too eager to help them, my lord. None other than those two. That is impossible. Master Digby thought it would please your majesty to rid the tower of Yorkist sympathizers. The orders for the arrests were given this morning. Master Mesbury? No, Master Girdler. Arrest him. Bring in the others. Take them to the tower. Wait. Come here. You have... You missed one. Where, my lord? There. Oh, yes, I see. Let me do it. Very good, my lord. Have you heard from Girdler? Yes, my lord. I mean, since he spoke to Mashbury. Uh, no, but, but we we didn't expect to, except that all's well and Mashbury will be waiting as arranged. Good. Uh, there's nothing to be afraid of, my lord. I'm not, believe me, Claremont. I'm, well, I, I don't know how I feel. Excited. And a bit sick. Now the cloak... Here, my lord. I hope I'm not sick. I always am when I'm frightened. Thank you. But I'm not frightened. No, my lord. I believe you're more frightened than I am, Claymund. There. there. Do I look well? Your pledge. Well, freedom is almost here, Claremont. How many guards will accompany us to the gate? Uh, four or five, my lord. They, they, will, they will be here shortly after I leave. But then don't wait. Leave now. I want to hear the lions and see the fields. Thank you, Claymond. Friend Perkin? My lord, the guards are changing now. Has Claymont left? Yes, Perkin. He's gone straight to the armory. He said Master Thomas will be along with, with, with the guards soon. Will you stay long with us at Ma Master Proud's house, Perkin? Oh, not more than a few hours, my lord. And then France. I should be sorry to lose you, Perkin. Perkin, I think I can hear Thomas and the guards now. Will they come to you first, or me? Uh, me, I think, my lord. Listen, can you hear? Yes, my lord. Be of good cheer, Perkin. Freedom! Is everything all right, Perkin? You must accompany us, Master Warbeck. You are under arrest. Perkin? Uh, yes, yes, my lord. A slight delay. We'll be with you soon. I must go now, my lord. Be brave. God be with us, Perkin. Well, let him dream a little longer, Mr. Digby. He has done no wrong.
Welcome, friends. My lord, I arrest you in the name of the king. Arrest him, men. Back in! The following men have been found guilty by this court upon charges of high treason and conspiracy against the king's person and the king's blood, and have been thereupon by this court condemned to death. Edward, Earl of Warwick, Perkin Warbeck, Thomas Astwood, John Girdler, Robert Claymound, Master Mashborough, Master Finch, Master Proud, John Water, Roger, and Strangewish. Those last two are guards, my lord. This requires your signature also, my lord. It's the free pardon for Robert Claymont. Will that ease his conscience, my lord? Would that God could pardon me so easily. Mm -hmm. 